Hello everyone. On this video, I'm just going to show you a quick way to remember the values for all of your trig functions, all six. Okay, so starting off, remember your SOHCAHTOA. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is equal to opposite over Sorry, opposite over adjacent. But it is also equal to sine over cosine. Okay, now starting from just there, we can go to our other three trig functions. Now cosecant of theta is 1 over sine theta. Cosine is just the reciprocal of secant, or secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent is just the reciprocal of tangent. Or it can also be cosine over sine. All right, so if you are still writing this, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the actual shortcut. Okay, so as you can see, I've partially filled out the chart. So we have sine of zero, cosine of zero, and it keeps on going and going and going. Oh, this should be... Okay, so starting off, just know that sine of zero is equal to zero and cosine of zero is equal to one. Okay, and sine of 90 degrees or pi over two is equal to one and cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. Okay, now we can fill out the rest of these for zero and 90 degrees just by knowing those four. So if you memorize those four, you can remember all of those for zero and 90 degrees. Okay, so we see that tangent, remember tangent is sine over cosine. So sine of zero over cosine of zero is zero over one, which is just zero. So we can go ahead and fill that in. And once we get those three, it's just the reciprocals. So the reciprocal of zero divided by any number is equal to zero. So if you flip zero divided by any number, you have some number divided by zero. And we know that zero can never be in your denominator. So that's going to be undefined. Okay, with secant, remember that's just your cosine flip. So if you have one over one to equal one, if you flip it, you still just have one. Now your cotangent, remember, you just get your tangent flip it. And remember, you have zero divided by any number is zero. So if you get any number divided by zero and just flip that, you end up with an undefined. All right. So once again, we do the same thing for our 90 degrees. If we have sine divided by cosine, we have one divided by zero. Anything divided by zero is just undefined. Okay, so if we get our sine and we flip it again, anything divided by well, you guess you could say one divided by one. If you get that and flip it, it's just one. For cosine, again, if you have anything divided by zero, just like we did with these two, anything divided by zero is going to be undefined. And for tangent, if you have anything that's, well, in this case, you can't, you don't have to worry about having sine over cosine. For cotangent, it will be cosine over sine. So you get your cosine over sine, zero divided by one is just zero. Okay, so we filled up the zeros and the 90s. 
just by knowing these four. Okay, so now here comes the fun part. When you're filling up all of these, or you don't have to try and memorize all of these, I'm going to show you a trick for that. Okay, so let me just roll that right up here, and this is where it's going to start off. Okay, we're going to start off with a square. It doesn't have to be perfect. And draw a little line down here to separate it, and we're going to start off with a triangle. Okay, so we know that each corner of a square is 90 degrees, so we go ahead and put that there. And let's have each one of those sides equal one. Okay, we're going to do something similar to our triangle, but for our triangle, we're going to have each of the sides equal two. Okay, which means if all the sides are equal, this is an equilateral triangle, which means all of our angles are equal. Since the inside of a triangle always equals 180, you have 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. Okay, so each one of those angles is 60 degrees. Okay, so we're going to do a similar action to both. For this rectangle, or this square, we're going to cut it in half diagonally. Okay, so it doesn't matter which side you use. We can go ahead and just use the bottom side and cross that out. So really all we're going to use is that bottom triangle here. Okay, so we know that this side is one from down there and this side is one. And if you do the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you see that this side will end up being square root of two. Okay, so since this angle was cut in half and this one was cut in half, they're both 90 degrees, you cut them in half, they're both 45 degrees. Okay, so we're done with that one for now. Now we go to this one. For this one, we just cut it right down the middle, right in half. And again, you can use the left or the right side, doesn't matter, but we're going to go ahead and use the right side. Okay, so if you have a length here that's of length two, you cut that in half, that's of length one. So, we have that triangle. Yep, let me shorten that up. There we go. So, this is now one down here. And since you cut that right down the middle, that makes this 90 degrees. Remember, this side is two. And again, if you use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, this will end up being square root of 3. Okay, now as for our angles, we already know that this is 90 degrees because we cut it in half and it's a straight line. This 60 degrees was cut in half, which means it's now 30 degrees. And this 60 degrees still stays the same. All right, so now if you know how to convert these two to these two, just like I showed you, you'll be able, to be able to fill in all of those blank values. All right. So we know that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. OK, so we go to our 30 degrees, which is right here. OK, so sine of theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, that's the opposite of 30. That's the hypotenuse. So you have one half. Okay. We know cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, we're at 30 degrees. So we have adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's square root of 3 over 2. All right. Now with tangent, that's opposite over adjacent. Again, we're still at 30 degrees. Okay. So you have opposite over adjacent. So you have 1 over square root of 3. Okay, so if we rationalize that denominator by multiplying both of those by square root of 3, we end up with square root of 3 over
over 3. Okay. So now all we have to do for cosecant, secant, and cotangent is just use the reciprocals of what we already have. Okay. So cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So the reciprocal of 1 half is just 2 over 1, which is 2. The reciprocal of secant is cosecant, or 1 over cosecant. So we get our cosecant, and we flip that around. We get 2 over square root of 3. So if we rationalize that denominator by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by square root of 3, we get 2 square root of 3 over 3. Now, cotangent, remember that's just reciprocal of tangent, so we go to our tangent, which is 1 over square root of 3, and we flip it, square root of 3 over 1, or just square root of 3. All right, so now we do the exact same thing, but we do that for 45 degrees. Okay, so remember you have 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. So you can also do these for your radian values. So if you want to have those as pi over 4, this is pi over 6, and this is pi over 3, you can do that also. It also works with that. I just find it easier to work with degrees. All right, so we have 45 degrees. So for this one, you can use either one of those 45 degrees. It doesn't matter. It'll give you the same answer either way. I'll just circle this one just to use it doesn't matter okay so we have sine of 45 degrees remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse so we have opposite over hypotenuse so 1 over square root of 2 again if we rationalize our denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 2 we end up with square root of 2 over 2 okay remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so we have our 45, we have adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over square root of 2 again, which becomes square root of 2 over 2. And our tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is just 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay. Now cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So we go to our sine which is 1 over square root of 2. If we flip that, it'll be square root of 2 over 1, which is just square root of 2. Okay. Same thing if we flip our cosine. 1 over square root of 2. Flip that, square root of 2 over 1, which again is square root of 2. And for our cotangent, we just have to flip our tangent. So if we flip 1, it's just 1, so nothing really changes there. Okay, so we've pretty much filled in everything. Okay, just to make sure you have the hang of it, I want you to press pause and try to fill in everything for 60 degrees. All right, so I'm assuming you've pressed pause and you've already filled this in. So let's go ahead and verify that. Okay, so you have 60 degrees, which is right here. Again, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So for your 60, that's your opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 3 over 2. For cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 60, adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 1 half. For tangent, that's opposite over adjacent. So if we go to our 60, opposite over adjacent, square root of 3 over 1. Is just square root of 3. Okay, and then we go ahead and use those three to fill in the next ones. So for our cosecant, we know that's just the reciprocal of sine. So we have square root of 3 over 2 here. So this will be 2 over square root of 3. Where if we rationalize our denominator, we get 2 square root of 3 over 3. Okay. Secant is just reciprocal of cosine. So if we get our cosine and flip it, we have one half. If we flip it, it's two over one or just two. 
And cotangent is just a reciprocal of tangent. So if we go to our tangent and we flip it, so if we have square root of 3 over 1, that just becomes 1 over square root of 3. Where if we rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 3, we end up with square root of 3 over 3. And that's how you can use those two shapes, this square and this triangle, to fill in all of those values instead of having to actually memorize them. All right. So hopefully this made sense and I will see you on the next video.